In this tutorial then we'll be looking at national governing bodies and you need to be aware that sometimes national governing bodies are shortened or referred to as NGBs so if you see a question which refers to NGBs or um, your teachers talk about NGBs just be aware, be mindful that NGBs stand for national governing bodies. We're going to be looking at what they are and what their roles are, what exactly do they do. So before we move on to look at exactly what national governing bodies do, I wonder if you can actually name three national governing bodies in the UK. Just stop the slide and see if you can actually answer that question now. So you can see in front of you uh, a number of national governing bodies and you need to be aware that you probably need to know at least two or three national governing bodies and here are some of the probably the more common ones or most well known. So you've got the RFU, Rugby Football Union, FA, you probably ought to remember or know that. The LTA is the Lawn Tennis Association as you can see. Uh, ECB is the England and Wales Cricket Board. I've no idea why Wales is left out, or the W is left out anyway, but ECB is the England and Wales Cricket Board. EN, uh, English Netball Association, and EH or EHB is the England Hockey Board. Um, there are plenty of others out there and you might want to go and research and find out the ones that your uh, sports that you're particularly interested in that will help you remember but you certainly need to be equipped with at least two or three national governing bodies so that you can give examples if you're asked. So now we come on to the roles of the national governing bodies and it's quite likely that you could well be asked a question which is exactly like the one in front of you which you can see asks you to identify three roles of national governing bodies. So stop the slide again, pause the slide and see if you can answer any of those uh, or give any of those answers before you move on. So this is the real heart of what the governing bodies do and there are a number of points I've got here for you. Um, if you can probably remember three or four of them that would be really useful. They're in no particular order of importance but just the roles uh, as I see them. The first one then is to promote the national governing body sport in order to increase participation. So if I use the Football Association, the FA as an example, they would be wanting to increase the number of people, boys and girls, young people taking part in football um, as much as possible and so therefore they will put on activities and events to promote that sport. So that would be one of the, fir the first thing they do, they promote their sport. Another thing that the uh, governing body might well do is look to develop strong links between schools, that's primary schools and secondary schools, and sports clubs. Clearly they, in line with the first point, they want people to take part in their sports, they want to increase participation and therefore a good way to do that is to work with the schools, the primary schools and the secondary schools to get them into sports clubs so that they will carry on participating or even taste and try the particular sport that they are representing. Another thing that they will do is they will make rules and laws for their sport. Now if you think about your own sport that you're interested in, think about any changes to laws or rules that you may be aware of that have taken place in recent years. Um, I'm thinking of hockey for example where the self-take, the free hit has come into play recently. That would have been a rule that was made by the English Hockey Board. Um, another rule in rugby is that if the ball is taken back into your own 22 and you kick it out, um, directly into touch, the line out is taken from where you kicked it. That's a law that was brought in by the RF, RFU. So the governing bodies are responsible for making the laws and the rules of their sport. Now another point is that as well as looking to increase participation, they also, as you can see, point number four, support elite performers. Now the elite performers are the people who are the very, very top of their sport who are probably at a national or an international level. So the governing bodies will support the elite performers. And the last point that I've got for you here is that um, the governing bodies are given a certain amount of money which comes from the national lottery and their responsibility is to distribute that accordingly amongst their sport. So if I use English, England Netball as an example, they will be given a certain amount of money from National Lottery and they will then decide where that money goes to. Does it go to a particular club for new facilities, for coaching, whatever it happens to be. So they will distribute National Lottery money. A recap then, uh, just quickly answer this question, name three national governing bodies. And similarly, a further question, can you identify three roles of national governing bodies? And if you're really good, see if you can extend that to five.